Welcome to the Alpine Yard. I'm Sally Pettit, Head of Horticulture here at the Garden. And today I'm going to take you on a tour behind the scenes. So the areas of the garden that very few visitors ever get to see, but the staff are absolutely um, almost in love with, because this is where everything really happens. It's where all our plants begin their lives, really. Um, we are positioned beside St Mary's School, and you can hear the music in the background, which we often have when we're at work. But here in the Alpine Yard, I'm going to start off with our propagation house. So this is where many of our Alpine plants start their lives. So they'll come in here, perhaps from seed or cuttings, and we'll grow them on until they're ready to go out into the wider yard and then go on display in our public Alpine house or onto the rock garden. Um, it's always a, a real treasure trove getting to look behind the scenes and see what everybody's growing in these houses. Um, so you can see plants that are newly pricked out, so a number of saxifragas along the side here, um, but also just inside the doorway, um, pots with seeds and seedlings coming up. And this is always the real joy of horticulture for many of us. So the next house in the Alpine Yard is one of our protected growing houses. So this is where we grow many of the Alpine plants that really require a bit more cosseting. Most enjoy fresh air, um, very, very good um, airflow, and don't mind the cold. But here are a number of plants that really do need a bit more protection from wind and cold. So tender bulbs, and particularly our collection of Dionysias, which are also appreciating screening from this intense sun at the moment. And heading through the yard, we come into our covered growing area. So here plants are much more exposed to the elements, but are protected from intense wet weather, hence the canopy overhead. Here in the frame, we have a whole planting area dedicated to our tulip collection, which is one of our national collections here in the garden. And they look very, very sad now. They've finished flowering, um, but a few weeks ago, there was just a proliferation of intense colour um, that the tulips offered. And over on the other side, our national collection of fritillarias. Again, going over now, but we're still feeding and watering them to nourish the bulbs that are now hidden and will hopefully provide flower next year. And then the rest of our plunge frames, really a mass with a mix of alpine plants um, that will again go into display houses um, in the, the height of spring, particularly right through the year. So you can see a whole host of plants um, for display purposes. So here again, another of our national collections. This is our national collection of European saxifragas, which are at their peak at the moment. So um, would ordinarily be on display in our mountains house um, for the public to visit. And then across the back here, a number of woodland species, which can be grown in the woodland garden, but which also um, get grown here to be taken into the public house for display purposes so that they're really lifted up for visitors to admire at close quarters rather than at their feet in the woodland garden. So we've moved now to our reserve glass houses which is where much of the rest of the material for growing out in the garden or in the glass house range is grown. So this is our first house, our propagation house. And this is a communal um, base for all sections of the garden, apart from the alpine section. So here we may be growing um, plants for the systematic beds, material for tropical houses, plants for the scented garden. So everything starts in this house, much of it from seed. And you can begin to see that it's relatively full at the moment. And as things grow on and mature, they get moved into different houses to either harden off or ultimately finish up either out in the garden or in one of our front reserve houses for public display. Heading next door is another communal space which is predominantly for plants that we've pricked out and have now put out into single pots such as these foxgloves here and you can see everything lined out growing on nicely um, just filling out and maturing before it gets moved on to the next stage. So from here, 
the hardy material will go out into one of the cooler houses or polytunnels um, and we'll move things on by stages from here again. The third house is one of the intermediate temperate houses. So this is full of um, material that is really for the glass house range. So this is reserve material. So in the foreground here, you can see cymbidium orchids, which when in flower will go into the display house, but also a collection of succulents for the either arid house or the continent part house. And towards the back, mainly um, orchids again for display purposes in the main glass house range. So our next house is another temperate house um, where we have cool species for display purposes. So in the plunge frames we have some cacti succulents and South African bulbous species mainly. And then as you swing around you can see much more succulenty material and also a lot of uh, Mediterranean and South African plants again waiting to go out for permanent display in the front glass houses. And the final house is the hot house. Very, very hot and humid in here. This is the tropical reserve house. And it really does feel, as soon as you come in, much more tropical than the other houses. Um, everything is growing um, to a much larger scale, has much more lush, large foliage, and just a much wetter, moister environment as well for everything that grows in here. So as we wander through to one side, you have a collection of Hoyas, which will eventually go into the, the front range. We have some bromeliads being grown for research purposes. And we have a tank for the um, Victoria Prusiana. So here we have a number of jars containing young seedlings of Victoria Cruziana and as these mature they will get potted up and put out into our pool in the tropical wetlands house in the front range for visitors to admire when the leaves get to that gigantic size and we hopefully get that beautiful tropical flower later in the year. And a last glance at one of our special residences here in the Tropical Reserve House. Um, this is a puffer fish which is kept in this tank to help keep the water clean and pure. Um, so not many people get a glimpse of this special resident here with us. Thank you for joining me on this tour. I hope you've enjoyed seeing behind the scenes here at the Botanic Garden. We hope that next year we'll be able to hold the Festival of Plants as normal and you'll be able to join us for a personal tour of the garden and some of its sites.